Now, here is the summary chart for tomorrow. In the northern part of the country, we expect long, bright periods, though these may be interrupted by continuous heavy showers. While in the east and west, and possibly also in the south, and even in the north, the continuous bright periods or continuous heavy showers may be interrupted by snow on high ground, and early morning fog will develop into persistent haze, except in coastal regions and inland areas. Drying will be good, bad, and indifferent. Well, I don't think anyone is going to offer me a job as a weatherman. But that's the kind of weather forecast you might have heard round about the end of the 18th century. If, of course, you had an 18th century television set. Like most other sciences at the time, the science of meteorology, which is the one that concerns itself with weather forecasting, was in its infancy. Farmers and others to whom the state of the weather was important had to rely on proverbs and folk wisdom such as Bad weather doesn't go past Sunday. There's not a Saturday in the year but the sun shines. One man who did a good deal to change the picture and give us a better idea of whether or not to hang out our washing was a Galway man called Richard Kerwin. If we had tables of the rainfall for 80 or 100 years, we might calculate the monthly mean and deduce the probable rainfall in the succeeding months. The table would every year grow more perfect and in time approach very near the truth. Well, they're still trying to get the long-range forecast right. But Richard Kirwan was one of the first to suggest the idea. He wasn't only interested in theories, however, but put his own notions into practice. I have installed accurate instruments, including an anemometer of new design for measuring the speed of wind behind my house in Cavendish Row, and make daily observations. In this, I am assisted by the Reverend Mr. McMahon, a Catholic priest who has spent three years measuring the tides of Dublin Bay and who has drawn up the tide table adopted by the commissioners of the Customs House. His skill and diligence in matters of this nature are well known. If such observations were to be carried out all over the world, some general laws might at length be deduced which would be applicable to climatology and weather forecasting. Whatever about the rest of the world, so many Irish farmers wrote to Richard Kirwan asking his advice on when to sow their crops that he had to employ a special secretary to deal with correspondence, or so the story goes. He got the Royal Irish Academy to send out 30 barometers and thermometers to people in different parts of the country in an attempt to set up do-it-yourself weather stations. But the amateur weathermen didn't turn out to be very reliable, and the experiment wasn't a success. 18th century scientists were used to that kind of thing, however, since science was still a very amateur business. No laboratories, no technicians in white coats, just as often as not a country gentleman poring over books and fiddling with primitive equipment in his library, whilst his estate and his tenants got on as best they could. I think it perfectly disgusting, Richard, that a gentleman should shut himself up with books and chemicals and horrible things like pig's bladders instead of applying himself to hobbies more befitting to his station. I certainly never intended my daughter to be the wife of a smelly, bookish monk. Richard's mother-in-law, the Dowager Lady Blake of Menlo in the County Galway, couldn't understand why her son-in-law should prefer pottering about with glass tubes connected up with pig's bladders to the normal country pastimes of hunting, shooting and getting drunk. But then Richard Kirwan wasn't the usual kind of country gentleman. I have the honour to be an honorary member of the Academies of Berlin, Dijon, Uppsala, Stockholm, Philadelphia, Edinburgh and the Mineralogical Society of Jena. I have been in my time President of the Dublin Library Society, Inspector General of Her Majesty's Mines in Ireland and a perpetual member of the Amicable Society of Galway. I have written on many subjects, including theology, metaphysics, logic, law, philology, music, mechanics, mineralogy and geology, as well as meteorology, of course. And I suppose 
You might call me the last true defender of the phlogiston theory. 